up in the sky. Look, it's captivating. It's energizing. It's Alliance's Heroes. Alliance's is the destination for entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, inventors, leaders, celebrities, and startups. Where our heroes in business align. Now, here's your host flying in, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. Oh, I'm so excited to be back again this week. We just have a full show of excellent, incredible information that you can use. Why? Because we're back again, too. It's the Experian Identity Report on Alliances, and we're bringing you these special reports with the world's leading experts about game-changing impact of identity and the need to use reliable data to make confident decisions that safely accelerate customer engagement. And with this week, we're joined again by Brian Stack. He is the Vice President of Engineering and Dark Web Intelligence. You can reach him at Experian.com. That's E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N.com. All right, what a topic we have today. Uh, Brian, what is ransomware yeah so i mean it's, it's been in the news a lot the last few years and uh ransomware is a tactic used by cyber criminals to extort businesses um so they'll infect the, their their networks often locking down their systems and during that process they will ask for some type of payment uh, in order to unlock their systems that's great. That's, uh, I mean, excellent. Now, why did it take, I mean, I think the thing is, is what, it took over 20 years for the creation of ransom model, model to actually take hold? Why? Yeah, well, I mean, I think we start with the, the genesis of ransomware. And so it's, it's actually a pretty fascinating story. So the first documented case officially of ransomware was by Dr. Joseph Pop in 1989. Um, he sent out uh, 20,000 floppy disks for, for those who remember floppy disks being used in computers back, back in the 80s and 90s um, to, uh, to uh, for a survey for, for medical researchers. And uh, he demanded uh, about $189 uh, as a license fee to be sent to a PO box. And so doctors got this, got this uh, research report, they put it into their computer, their computer was locked. It said, well, thank you. You know, you've now been infected with this ransomware. Please send $189 to this P.O. box in Panama. And so it did. It, you know, that was in 1989. It was groundbreaking. Um, and But then ransomware really didn't take hold and become a, a global problem until about 2012, 2013. And, and there's a number of reasons for that. I, I like to kind of um, break it down after been doing, I've been doing this. I've been doing this for so many years now to what I like to call kind of stack Brian Stack's uh, law of not novel cyber events. And it's based on kind of three factors. So one is the technical accessibility and viability of the technology multiplied by how does it manipulate human behavior? And then finally, the economic benefit. And so when we look at technical accessibility and viability, it really boils down to is the technology that is that is leveraging this attack, this type of attack, is it generally available to the average person, right? So back in 89, when this attack happened, writing a piece of code was generally, it'd be very skilled. You couldn't just pick a ransomware up off the, off the dark web market for, for, a few, for you know, $100 and use it in an attack. You have to write it yourself. So the accessibility was hard back then. Manipulation of human behavior, well, ransomware works. When you, all of a sudden your system is locked down and you can't use anything, and then there's a ransom over your head, it evokes fear, it evokes anxiety. So the, the human behavior piece was there in 89. And finally, the economic benefit. No one really knew, like, would people pay for this? Would they not? And so when we apply these three factors, it really didn't take hold because trying to do a payment, cryptocurrency didn't exist in 89. So there was no way to anonymize a payment. You had to send stuff to a PO box in Panama to try to hide your identity, which is obviously very clunky and, and very clumsy and not very efficient. The technical accessibility, again, very low coefficient. You had to write your own code. You couldn't just pick it up as going on the dark web. And there's Amazon-like sites on the dark web where you can pick up code to, to Im implement these ransomware attacks very easily. And so both those things, technical accessibility, the human factor, cryptocurrency availability, all make it very, very attractive 
now moving forward. And we've seen nothing but growth over the last decade. Uh, Brian, again, extremely valuable information. And we can't thank you enough for being here today because you're watching and listening to me, David Kogan, host of the Alliance's Hero Show. You know, the only place to go where entrepreneurs align, E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. And make sure, again, you go to it, click on radio, because you'll be able to view and listen to past interviews with Experian, because we have with us uh, Brian Stack, the Vice President of Engineering and Dark Web Intelligence. So you can reach him again by going to Experian.com. Uh, Brian, how costly, though, is this whole thing with ransomware and cyber attacks in general? You mentioned that it affects and can affect anyone. So talk to us about the costs on that. Yeah, so I'll give your audience a, a few stats that I, I think really hit the theme home. The first is that in terms of cyber crime overall worldwide, it's estimated that it'll be about a $10 trillion problem by about 2025, 2026. And th there's some variability there, but anywhere from eight to $10 trillion. Putting that in some context, the overall GDP of the world is roughly a little over a hundred trillion dollars. So the potential is that 10% of the world economy um, could be based on cyber criminality. Ransomware in general, so focusing specifically on ransomware, the cost to the world in 2021 was about $20 billion. That number is expected to rise tenfold to about $265 billion by 2030. The impact to businesses. So at the end of the day, okay, your systems are locked. You know, there's an impact to consumers, but the reality is the average downtime for a business impacted by ransomware before they become kind of fully functional again, it's 25 days. So think about critical systems, whether that be for a business or even more so that we're starting to see schools, hospitals, the impact on students, on people receiving medical care. Um, you know, people can't necessarily go without medical care for, for 20 days. Now you can say, well, well, just because a system is locked, why does someone not get medical care? Well, often those systems can't function anymore. And so, so people who, 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 who are part of very sensitive medical treatments that rely on very expensive pieces of equipment, that equipment is often offline. The median price of ransomware in terms of a payment is around a quarter of a million dollars that gets paid out uh, during some of these extortion extortion processes. Yeah, incredible. All right, so let me ask you the magic question here. Five years from now, what will you see with what do you see with ransomware and the whole cybercrime community more generally looking like? Yeah, so I, I think there's a, a few a few pieces here, right? So one is everyone is talking about chat GPT and AI, right? So that obviously will play a role. Um, they will leverage that to make more efficient, more uh, convincing social engineering types of attacks. So this whether it be through email, through, through calling you through the phone, they will leverage that technology to hone in and make the attacks more convincing. Because at the end of the day, often these attacks are twofold. One is there's some type of uh, system failure that allows the criminal in. The other often, what often happens is there's human error. Somebody clicks, somebody accepts a, the notification they shouldn't accept. So that'll have a huge impact. I think, again, this is a business. These are not just one-off hackers like you, that you see in the movies or super geniuses. These are businesses that run. And so they're going to work on being more operationally efficient. So they will go back to the basics. They will say, you know what, instead of just blasting phishing emails out or text messages, we're going to try to figure out maybe let's send these out later in the day when people are more tired. So they'll mm. try to figure out, geolocate their victims to figure out when's the best time to probably send them that, that, that uh, you know, Amazon notification that their package is late, click here, probably 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, probably better than doing it at noon probably going to trick someone much easier. Also, I, I think space is on the horizon. I think space is a new frontier. The metaverse is a new frontier. I think we will see attacks migrate into those, those new areas. And in terms of ransomware overall, we've seen the, the evolution from single extortion, which was just locking a computer, 
to double extortion, which was locking the a computer, publishing information online about what they stole. Then it was third uh, triple extortions where they locked your company's computer, they published the information they stole online, and then they did an attack on your network. And then finally, most recently, we've seen quadruple extortions, which are all the first three. Plus, they reach out directly to your consumers uh, through email or through some types of uh, ad online. I've seen situations of these criminal organizations posting ads online saying, you know, we stole the data from company X. How do you feel about that? You should call them and let them know they probably should pay our extortion um, if you ever want to see your data. So that is the evolution. It is it is evolving every day and getting more brazen and um, and novel. Wow. And again, I mean, extremely valuable information that you've been sharing today. It's a whole new world. This has been the Experian Identity Report with Brian Stack, Vice President of Engineering and Dark Web Intelligence. Make sure that you go to Experian.com. And of course, this is David Kogan. It's been an honor to have you here today, Brian. Make sure that you go to Alliances.com. That's E-L-I-A-N-C-E-S.com. The only place where entrepreneurs line. Thank you again, Brian. Thank you, David.